If you've been paying attention, you will notice that it is officially Pro Wheel season. Red Eye have just dropped a massive collection called the Childhood Collection, and Undercover Wheels have dropped the movie series. So far, Red Eye have dropped promos for Jake Dotson's Pro Wheel, Chad Tannehill's Pro Wheel, and Mikhail Vietzman's Pro Wheel, and Undercover have dropped promos for Chris Calkin's Pro Wheel, and most recently, Joey Lunger. So, let's get into them. Jake Dotson was actually the first to release his promo for Red Eye Wheels. He dropped it quite a few weeks ago now. It was really well done. It was made by Carter LeBlanc, featured a bunch of amazing skating in it. I would love to show you some examples and talk about it in more detail, but YouTube have unfortunately taken it down due to copyright issues, which I always find stuff like that really irritating because I guarantee you can go on YouTube, search for the song that's had a copyright issue with it or got a strike, and there'll be a ton of videos using that song on YouTube. But I've bought the wheels just to support the guy, picked them up at Winter Clash and I'm really looking forward to riding them. They come in a nice colour, they've got a baseball motif, 60mm and good profile. So congratulations Jake. The next person to drop a promo for Red Eye was Mikhail Witzeman, or if you don't want to say it that way, you can call him Michael Witzeman, whatever works. I was a little disappointed with this edit, mainly because it's only two and a half minutes long and the first minute is just shots of the wheel and his skate and not really a lot happening. Plus, the entire thing was filmed in his local skate park, looks like it was filmed in an afternoon. The first time I watched this, I just wasn't into it at all. Decided to give it another chance and after more viewings, I definitely appreciated it more. He's just really making interesting use of the obstacles, showing some fancy footwork. You can see he's taking inspiration from wizard skating. You can also see that he's incorporating quad skating moves into some of his tricks. I'm not entirely sure what it is I was expecting. Maybe I was hoping for a full street part. Maybe I thought just because he was getting his first pro wheel, he was going to come out with an absolute banger of a section. But it makes sense because he's also been turned pro for USD. I'm assuming he's got a pro introduction section on the way. He's got a pro skate coming this year, apparently. If you're at Blading Cup, Spring Cup, Spring Cup? It's called Spring Cup. If you're at Spring Cup, you might see him riding them or they might even publicly announce them there. Who knows? Have a look out for them at Spring Cup. But yeah, I think I was just hoping for a full street section that never came. So maybe my expectations were just in the wrong place to fully appreciate it. But yeah, it was all right. And the most recent promo that Red Eye Wheels has dropped is for the Chad Tannehill Pro Wheel. Chad's one of those skaters that I feel like most crews have a Chad in their in their group. A Chad like like that guy. He's just he's a bit burly. He can take an absolute beating. He can land some really good tricks. He's all about technical switch ups and just getting the trick done. He doesn't really care about finessing it that much. And they don't look that pretty, but it, they're undeniably impressive. I feel like every group has as a chad and yeah it's not really my type of skating but i respect the skill and he is definitely tough as nails because some of the falls he takes are unbelievably brutal and he just gets up and laces it so fair play to the guy I definitely think out of all the promos that Red Eye have released recently for their new range of wheels, Jake Dotson's section is far and away the most impressive, really technical, really stylish. The fish brain off the roof at the end was just ridiculous. It was like something from a mind game video from like 2005 or something. And Jake has just been killing it since he's came back. He's really impressive. He has not missed a beat. People talk about John Bellino having one of the best comebacks or Josiah Blee. Jake Dotson has had a phenomenal comeback in bleeding. Now, let's get into Undercover. They have dropped another large line of wheels, the movie line. They've given pro wheels to a bunch of people. I'm really looking forward to the Nicola Torelli promo because if you saw his introduction, it was so impressive, so stylish. He just makes the actual act of rollerblading look really impressive, really cool, which isn't that easy to do. I've been rollerblading for like over 25 years and I definitely don't look cool just rolling from A to B. He manages that effortlessly. So be on the lookout for Nicola Torelli's promo. It can't be that far away and I am willing to put hard cash on the fact that it's going to be a good watch. But let's talk about the promos that are out there. So Chris Calkins released his promo. It was a few weeks ago now, two or three weeks ago, and it's got a Warriors theme. I really like this because I was a huge fan of the Warriors film growing up. I like the fact that he's used the theme music from it. So it's got that kind of eeriness about it. And Chris Calkins 
he's not the fanciest skater. He doesn't skate big stuff. He doesn't. He's not like very like creatively minded in the fact of like going going out of the box in terms of tricks. But what I really like about his skating is he's got really good flow. In this section, you can see him doing nice, smooth, elegant lines. Even when he's doing single tricks, he's just got this smoothness about him, this fluidity, this gracefulness that I just really, I find really appealing. As someone who has the gracefulness of a rock when I roll a blade, I basically just stumble my way from trick to trick. I love watching someone that can just finesse the hell out of it and make really every trick just look perfectly landed like textbook and Chris Calkins has got that ability love to see it and it'll be interesting to see what happens now that he's no longer riding for USD he quit USD after the last Bladen Cup and I wonder if Undercover are going to keep him on contract when his current contract runs out but time will tell if this wheel sells well who knows the most recent promo out of all the ones I've mentioned is the Joey Lunger one which came out last week I love Joey Lunger skating. He's got so many different facets to it and you can see them all in this section. It's not very long, I think it's under two minutes, but he crams a lot of stuff in there. He's got grinds to wall rides, he's got cess slides, he's hopping from obstacle to obstacle, just making really interesting use of it. He does one of those anti-gravity defying things that I first saw Colin Martin doing. I'm sure parkour guys have been doing it for ages, but it's really impressive on skates. Also, you get to see just how technical Joey is in terms of grinds. He does several grinds switch in natural. First off, he does a Mistral both ways. He also does a Savannah both ways. Yes, I called it a Savannah. I'm not calling it an Alley -oop Unity. I do not care what you say. Joey also does a Fakie 180X grind, natural and unnatural, so it's safe to say that his natural and switch game is on point. But my favourite line in the whole video is where he uses the terrain around him in a really unique way. He uses a little clump of ice as a kicker, then does like what you could either call a back torque, dragging his other foot on the ice, or you could call it a back farve with his lower foot dragging on the ice. Whatever you want to call it, it's really interesting use of his surroundings. And then he does the little ledge hop to the anti-gravity thing but I couldn't help but notice that on the final track his little anti-gravity thing that at the end he loses his phone let's hope it's not broken now I don't know if this was intentional but Joey's first clip where he drops in on the roof looked a lot like the iconic Brian Shima one magazine cover where he's dropping into a much bigger roof this looks like a kind of miniature version if they intentionally reference that that is absolutely awesome if not, it's a really cool little random coincidental Easter egg. Does anyone else get excited about noticing stuff like this in videos? No? Just me? Okay then. With all the pro wheel promos that are coming out recently, it's reminded me of something that I've always thought is really strange about the rollerblading industry for years. You can be pro for a wheel company and have your own signature wheel. In fact, some people have several pro wheels out for one company, but then either be amateur or flow or not even sponsored at all in terms of a boot brand. So out of this selection, you've got Jake Dotson, who is pro for Red Eye and has a pro wheel, but is amateur for Razors. Then you've got Chad Tannehill, who is, he was either amateur or flow for razors and then he quit and now he's got a pro wheel from Red Eye. I think this might be his second pro wheel, can't remember. You get Mikhail Wiesman, who's recently been turned pro for USD and is pro for Red Eye. Then on Undercover, you've got Chris Calkins, who has had multiple pro wheels with Undercover, but he was amateur for USD until he quit. And you've got Joey Lunger, who's amateur for USD, but has a pro wheel with Undercover. That to me just seems really odd. Now, I get if you're sponsored by different brands, they've got different agendas if they're not connected, if the company's not connected in any way. So for example, you can be sponsored by a wheel company and they might value you very highly and think that your name will sell, so they want to give you a pro wheel. Whereas the boot company may not see you as ready to be pro yet, or they may not think you'll ever get there. They think you just belong as flow or amateur. And I also understand a pro wheel investment, getting a wheel made is a lot less money than getting a skate made. It's a lot more financial risk for the brand. So I can completely 
empathise with how they don't want to take that risk unless they think it's going to pay off. It kind of reminds me of the scenario with Don Bambrick back in the day. Don Bambrick was pro for mind game before it collapsed. He was on one of the most iconic pro teams of all time. He was on a team with Dustin Latimer, Aaron Feinberg, Chris Farmer. And then when Salomon ended, he got on Razors. But when he was initially on Razors, he was on Razors Flow. Razors team started on Razors on Flow. Did a section for icons and turned pro. Never happened before. That was pretty tight. Adam Johnson even made like a thing about it saying mind game pro to Razor's flow just kind of highlighting how ridiculous it is that you can be on such a monumentally significant team, such an important team in rollerblading and then on the boot brand you're really really low down the ranks. Obviously he became AM, um, he then became pro, he got a pro skate but it is just weird that you can be sponsored by two different companies and they can have you on completely different tiers. And out of the ones that I've mentioned, the Joey Lunger one is the strangest. So Joey's sponsored by two brands that are both run by Powerslide. He's sponsored by USD and he's sponsored by Undercover. For USD, he's amateur, but for Undercover, he is pro and has a pro wheel. Why would you be on two different tiers for a company that is owned by the same thing? It's all under the same umbrella. So the only like logical explanation I can come up with for this is they're planning on turning them pro for USD, hopefully this year. But if they're not, it seems a bit strange to not bump them up on USD, but bump them up on Undercover. You've got to think either move them up for both brands or don't move them up for either. But it seems weird to have them on one level for undercover and a different level for USD. I know I'm an absolute geek. I know I just think about these things way too much, but does anyone else not find that really strange? There's been numerous instances over the years of people who have pro wheels and yet they don't even have a boot sponsor or their flow for a boot sponsor. And something about that just seems a bit odd. You would think that these companies would communicate with each other or come to some sort of agreement or maybe that is the issue maybe the companies just aren't having this dialogue between them but it does seem really weird that you could have i don't know a pro frame for caltic or whatever but yet not even have a legitimate skate sponsor also have you seen the price of the new undercover pro wheels they are now 55 pounds for a set of four 55 pounds for a set of four. I know skates went up in price due to shipping and materials being more expensive and the influence of COVID, but now it's trickling down to wheels and that's kind of crazy. If you want to buy a flat setup of undercover pro wheels, it is costing you 110 pounds and that's before you get bearings for it. Before bearings. I'm telling you, it's only a matter of time before people are going to be out there giving away sexual favours in return for a flat setup. Does anyone else think this is really strange or am I just going off on a complete tangent? Let me know in the comments. As always, I want to give a massive shout out to my Patreon supporters. They are listed on the screen now. You can join the Patreon page for as little as £3 a month. There's loads of videos, photos, ramblings like this on there. Also, got these new t-shirts out. They are also shown on the screen now. There is £5 international postage, or if you buy it in the UK, it is free postage. So yeah, any support is greatly appreciated.